Ooh, this week is very, very special. Where are we going? Down to the Hatch Valley in Hatch, New Mexico. World famous for what? The Hatch Green Chilies. We're teaming up with my good friends at the Fresh Chili Company to make some stacked enchiladas. But also we're gonna explore the history of the Hatch Valley and let you know what's going on. Y'all stick with me. We're hitting the road. This is gonna be a great episode. Hey, thank y'all for joining us. We're south of Hatch, New Mexico. It's one of the best places to be that you can ever find. And the aroma that is coming out of the sky is what? Roasted Hatch green chili everywhere you look. It Nothing is the better. season. My good friend Randy McMillan here, Fresh Chili Company, we've partnered up. He's gonna share some recipes with us today. First thing we're gonna do is some fresh red enchilada sauce. Mm. And we just went out and got the chilies this morning from Hatch. And um, this is my dad's recipe. Um, he uh, could never eat uh, red chili because it gave him indigestion, but the green chili didn't. And he figured out the only difference was the green chili was picked fresh and the red chili was picked dried. So he said, I'm gonna go pick some fresh red chili. It's sweeter, it's redder, and it's better. So we're gonna take that red enchilada sauce and we're gonna make uh, New Mexico enchiladas, which New Mexico enchiladas are stacked. Yeah. You take the tortillas and you put some sauce down, little cheese down, maybe some good hamburger or yes. elk or deer, whatever you wanna put down. Then the most important part is two, what do you call those eggs? Cackleberries. Oh, cackleberries. Yes, cackleberries. Two cackleberries on top and you over easy. Carol makes the best cackleberries, they are. And uh, Carol's my wife and we, kind of break them, that yellow runs over that red chili. Oh, you'll see. So this is uh, the sack of red chili that we oh, yes. got this morning. Look at there. Isn't that oh, beautiful? Oh my goodness, Christmas has come right yeah. now Yeah, the reason nobody makes uh, red, in, red uh, chili rellenos is because um, it's hard to find them firm like that and they only last for a day or so. But we're gonna take these. I'm gonna get you a knife here. I got one right here in the bucket. Good, there you go. Good good, good man always does. And we're gonna take, uh, take that off and then go inside and just take that, the seeds off. We're gonna fill that pot and uh, boil them for about 20 minutes. And um, then we'll run them through the, the blender with some garlic, a little uh, salt nothing else and uh we're gonna have the best enchilada sauce i am ready that i know of i am ready and trust me i know my enchiladas <laughs> and you know the difference between a red chili and a green chili is about three weeks you know it's the same exact animal in fact i got a few over here um here's the that's the green chili and you can see that one's kind of turning red and that one's real red and that's even redder and uh, so this is about three weeks older or newer than that. Green chili is actually not ripe. The red chili is ripe. How hot is hatch chili? Well, it depends on which hatch chili you're talking about. This one is called Sandia. It's actually one of my favorite. It's, uh, it's an old time chili. Um, this has been around all of my life. And uh, this flavor profile is just really, really solid. And, uh, but it's hot considered a hot chili. A, a matador chili, it's also a hatch chili, is extra hot. I, mean, I know that a chili is like a lot of things when you're growing, uh, you know, you, you're gonna rotate that ground out because you're, it takes a lot to make a chili. You know, usually you have to rotate every other year for a crop. This plant uh, takes so much out of the soil that a good chili farmer is not gonna do it but once every five years. How long has Hatch been growing chilies? Well, my farmer, Adam's Produce, this is, he's a fifth generation farmer. His uh, great, 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 great grandfather actually came over here from uh, Italy and uh, came over here to grow grapes. People don't know that this is the oldest grape growing region in the United States. And uh, fell in love with chilies and started growing chili. 200 plus years. Oh my gosh. You know, but even before that, the natives, uh, the native Indians uh, around here were growing chilies up in the Membrus you know, the Gila cliff dwellings up yes. there? They found, they found uh, you know, chilies in the cliff dwellings that they, they had been growing. So it's been around a long time. <laughs> I dropped it. 
That's the, the 10 second rule. Oh, the schnauzer's got it. I hope he don't bite it. Schnauzer. It'll be the last one he bites. <laughs> so let me get a big old spatula here and push it down. Well, them have bowled and got tender. I mean, oh, look at the color. I mean, pretty, so bright, so pretty. It's just jumping out at you. Yeah. You know what? And uh, so you just, we're going to run these through the blender. We're going to run them through the blender. Then they'll get strained again. Yep. We're okay. going to put them through a drainer and get the skin and the seed out. Next, we're going to put a little water in here. Yeah. Okay. Getting ahead of myself. Um, That's stock. Stock. Yes. That's the correct cooking term for it, isn't it? Uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put about that much in. I'm going to cover about half of the chili with that stock, okay? And if you want a thicker sauce, put a little less in there. If you want a thinner sauce, but that's about what we do. <clears throat> when we cook this at the plant in 100-gallon uh, steam kettles, I don't add any water. So when you get our product, it is thick as a yeah. brick. Uh, I don't think you want to pay to ship water, and I don't want to pay to ship yep. water. I don't want you to buy water from me. So when you get this, you're going to have to add about at least half a, of a jar in because it's just too thick. It's not enchilada sauce. I'm going to go ahead and put three cloves of garlic in about that much chili. People are going to say how much salt, and I'm going to say just the right amount. Just the right amount. Yeah. Probably about that, maybe a little more. much pressure, brother. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sorry, Carol. <laughs> I mean, that got all, like, look at it. Oh, yeah, it's all, and look at the wall up there. We got the wall painted red. Don't try, don't try this at home. Wasn't that fun, Randy? <laughs> so after we cleaned up the kitchen, actually after Carol kicked us out yes. and cleaned up the kitchen. And we didn't lose that much, really. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, we're sorry. Yes. <laughs> Don't make me out to be the bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're the bad guys. Yeah, we are. And thank you for helping us. But I'm just going to tell you, I'm so glad it was at your house instead of mine. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Okay, you want to come in and, oh man. Smell that, Kent. That's heaven right there. Yeah, if we had smell-o-vision, yes. it would be the best. So this is, uh, this is a colander. Um, I think it's made specifically for doing what we're doing. I don't know, I've never seen them except in a, a chili store. So um, you, you're seeing that uh, this has taken about six of us to make this uh, product, <laughs> especially with the blow-up we had a minute ago. And, um, but uh, we make this by the 100 gallons at the plant. Uh, actually, we make 300 gallons at a time. And you can buy it right in the jar and uh, pour it in a pan and heat it up and make your enchiladas like we're going to show you how to do in a minute. I um, also want to show you the difference between, see the difference between the, the sun-dried. And our chili, by the way, when we say sun-dried, it really is sun-dried. We leave it on the vine. We leave those red chilies right there on the vine until January, maybe February and they are truly sun-dried. I don't know any other company that does that. Everybody else puts the red chili in a, in a machine and they dry it quickly. And when you do that, it gives it a bitterness. So ours are truly sun-dried. So you just go around and around and around like that. And uh, that is your enchilada sauce right there. Isn't that pretty? And it's just about the right consistency. Mm. So much flavor comes out of that. Uh, people are going to be blown away. So we got our sauce warming back up. Everything has been blended to well, and that stuff is like we could just eat it by itself. Is that orange or red? Oh, I would say it's a little of both. Yeah. You know what I mean? A little of both. Beautiful yeah. color. Yeah. But tortillas, and people are going to say, where do you get that color at? Yeah. You know? Well, um, to my knowledge, I think the only place you can get it is at the Fresh Chili Company. And uh, we make corn tortillas 
uh, with this sauce. Yeah. So we're just going to put these in here. You could fry them if you wanted to fry them. Uh, they're probably better fried, but they're better for us. Yeah. We just heat them up on both sides. Um, I usually eat two or three of these tortillas when I make my stacked enchilada. If I'm putting meat with it, which we're not doing today, um, but uh, if we are putting meat with it, I'll usually eat two. So you'll see them start to curl up a little bit. I'm just trying to get the moisture out of it a little bit. When you put this on it, it it's dry and it sucks that moisture back into the chili, into the tortilla. Went to Hatch this morning and picked some really good chilies and I get to see what they turn into, but I'm wanting to see the end result, my friend, with these cheese enchiladas. And, Put them uh, together. That's the best part. At the end. Okay, good. This is the fun, almost the funnest part. The funnest part is going to be eating them, but this is fun too. Okay, we're going to make one and then we'll make the rest of them. All right. Okay. So this is that beautiful sauce that we just made with the fresh red chilies. I'm going to take that. I'm just going to go like that. Cover the bottom of the plate. But uh, so this is cheese, just good old grated. I think this is longhorn cheese. Yeah. Again, you don't want anything that has a real sharp flavor just because you've got so many other flavors yep. going on. So I'm going to put a tortilla on. That's my first tortilla. And then next is the red gold. We make, I think, 15 different sauces at Fresh Chili Company. If I had to pick one that I would not have any of the others the rest of my life, this is the one. Probably be this one? Yeah, you know, no probably about it. You know, you could also do the meat thing right here to where we layer some ground beef on the bottom, cover it, and we use ground pork, we use venison, we use whatever you got, yep. and you can make this thing as tall as the plate will hold it, yes, you know what I mean? Yes, and, you uh, can. And you want to use a plate that's got a little reservoir yeah. in it. And usually we do make it with meat. Today is cheese enchiladas. So there's layer number two. And you just want it swimming in this stuff. Oh. I'm going to go three layers here. Three layers deep. Yeah. And the last layer, um, the cheese I'm going to use is different. I'm going to use that Asadero cheese. You could use Munster, um, uh, a, a white cheese. I like that on top because uh, you'll see when it comes out of the oven, the color is really pretty. Beautiful. And then this is uh, Asadero, grated Asadero cheese. Um, the other thing that, uh, that I like on it, and I will get some out and chop it up in just a second for the rest of these, is some chopped onions. And um, Carol uh, makes the best eggs on the planet. She's going to make the eggs while this is in the broiler. We'll put it in the oven. How long we got to cook it in there? Just long enough for the cheese to melt yeah. through? Yeah, we're really not cooking it. All we're doing is, is um, caramelizing that cheese yep. on top. eggs since I was a little bitty girl and I don't even remember who taught me this trick but if you put a little salt in your butter it does something to your butter and it helps your butter to cook your eggs more evenly. It really makes for a great fried egg. Randy, it was worth the wait, you know what I mean? I mean, presentation, they used to chastise me on cooking shows, you know, because I didn't have good enough presentation, but you went all out today, my friend. Uh, I am very honored, uh, as in this is typically served with beans, just like you got it. And, um, mm. 
the richness that you get out of that red sauce um, just jumps right out at you the very first bite. I'd eat it every day, three oh. times a day. You know, I think I told you earlier, we would put up, uh, we tried to put up a hundred uh, of these every year before I started canning it in the freezer so we could have two a week. Yeah. The family wanted to have this twice a week, so. Mm. You know, where I come from, and on our YouTube videos, we every time we take a bite, we're gonna do a little dance. You got oh, a little boy. dance left in you? Yeah. Yeah, come on. <laughs> come on, let the pastor do that. That is what I call fine dining, my friend. It is. <laughs> Randy, we thank you so much, brother. Uh, it has been an honor to cook with you and Carol in y'all's kitchen today. Sorry we made a mess, Carol, but it happens. Uh, but it, it is with great pride and privilege that I tip my hat to all our servicemen and women and all the veterans uh, that have kept that old flag of flying no matter where we're at. We commend you each and every one. The rest of you, come on in up in here close. Get yeah. up in here real close. <laughs> we're going to give you a big old hug. Something like that. God bless you, each and every <laughs> one, and I'll see you down the stacked enchilada trail. Thank you, Ken. Uh-huh. <laughs> Great smell. Don't take long to roast the chili. Uh-oh. Hold on. Start that over. Hey, get on out of here. No. They clap. It's what? Sorry We're about that. We're just going to snap fingers. Show your fingers. Everybody's like, stand back. <laughs>